Hello, 7th grade, and this is Lesson 6-3 on Similar Figures and Scale Drawings. In tonight's lesson, we have two objectives. First, you will be able to solve problems that involve similar figures. And secondly, you will be able to solve problems that involve scale drawings. Now, for our warm-up, we're not actually going to be doing it, but we talked about how to solve proportions yesterday with those cross products. And I have to tell you, it's a very, very important thing because this whole lesson here, we're going to be solving by doing proportions. So first, a couple definitions. Here is similar figures. When we talk about similar figures, they are the same shape. So the shapes are alike, but they're not necessarily the same size. So here, for example, I have two similar figures. They're two right triangles. However, they're not the same size. One is greater than the other. But something to know about them is they have corresponding sides and angles. So for example, this side that I'm highlighting in green corresponds with that side. This side corresponds with that side. And finally, the hypotenuse of the triangle, those correspond as well. So now we have this one. There is trapezoid A, B, C, and D is equivalent or corresponds to trapezoid E, F, G, H. They want us to find the value of K. Well, the important idea here is we need to do the corresponding sides. We're going to create a proportion using the corresponding sides. For example, I start with this side, AB. I know that it is six units long. All right. Now, I need to find the one that is the same on the other triangle, or excuse me, trapezoid. And I take a look while well, it's a longer side, so it must correspond to EF, which is K long. And then I do the same here. Well, this length is 3, and on the other trapezoid, it is 2. So there I have my proportion. And now, of course, I solve it by doing cross products. So same idea of yesterday, 6 times 2 is the same as 3 times k. And I multiply. 6 times 2 is 12. 3 times k is 3k. And solve for k, I divide by 3. And I get k is 4 units long. So k is 4. So you can see how I had to first form a proportion in order to solve it. Now we have this one, and it's your turn. You need to find the value of y. So again, you're going to start by forming a proportion and then solving it. So go ahead and pause me now. All right, let's do this one. Well, I see that line DC here is 24. And on the corresponding trapezoid, it is 16. So that's one part of my proportion, or one ratio. And now I do the other side. And again, I go back to the original one that I started with. So I have 18 over y. And I multiply. 24 times y is 24y. And 16 times 18 is, if I figure this one out, 288. So I have 24 times y is 288. I solve for y by dividing by 24 again. And I get y is, well, 288 divided by 24 is 12. So y is 12 units long. All right, now, we did ones with shapes, so we had a direct measurement. But sometimes you don't have something directly to measure. It's either too big or it's the distance is too far. So that's when we use indirect measurements. This is a process in which you use the similar figures. So again, they're the same shape, but they're not the same size, to find distances that are difficult to measure directly. And I have an example on this next page. I have a ruler and a flag. And I'm moving that box so you can see it a little better. A flake pole casts a shadow of 5 feet long. At the same time, a yardstick casts a shadow of 1 and 5 tenths feet long. The triangle shown for the flake pole and its shadow is similar to the triangle shown for the yardstick in its shadow. How tall is the flake pole? So here, you can see, they make the shape. We have a flag, which we know it has a measurement, or the shadow goes 5 feet. And for this meter stick, the shadow is 1 and 5 tenths feet. So we need to do the same thing we've been doing and create a proportion. So I find the similar sides. Well, I know on the meter stick, it's 1 and 5 tenths feet. 
And on the flagpole, the corresponding side is 5 feet. So now I do the same here. All right. Well, I already did that one, so I go back to the meter stick. And that is 3 feet. That's its height. And now we have to find the height of the flagpole, which we don't know. So I'm going to just put in the variable x. And we solve. Well, 5 times 3 is the same as 1 and 5 tenths times x. So I'm going to simplify it and get 15 is the same as 1 and 5 tenths x. To get x by itself, we divide by 1 and 5 tenths. And I get x is, well, 15 divided by 1 and 5 tenths is 10. So here, the height of the flagpole is 10 feet. There we go. So again, you used a proportion in order to solve it. Here's your next one. How tall is the tree if the girl is 5 feet tall? I want you to set this up the same way. Again, the key idea here is keep the corresponding sides together. So create a ratio with the, about the shadow of the tree versus girl, and then do one for the height of the tree versus a girl. So go ahead and pause me now. All right, let's solve this one, shall we? So I'm going to stick with the ones they tell us first. Well, I know the shadow of this tree is 10 feet. I know the shadow of the girl is 4 feet. And I'm going at the height. Well, I don't know the height of the tree, so that's my variable of x. But I know the girl is 5 feet tall, so that's what I have. That would be my proportion. And now I do cross products. 10 times 5 is 50. 4 times x is 4x. Simplify by going by 4. And if you solve this one out, and I'm just going to do some work to the side, you get 12 and a half. So the tree is 12 and a half feet tall. And again, we use indirect measurement because we had to use a tree versus a girl to try to solve this. Final part of the lesson tonight is talking about scale drawing. And this is what you see when you look at maps or globes, for example. It's this enlarged or reduced drawing that is similar to an actual object or place. And again, I just told you where you might see it. Um, really, a map is the best example of it because you look at a map and it had to be really reduced in order to get it in a page of your textbook. While we know that the United States wouldn't fit on one page of a textbook, it's huge, it's large. But they used the scale drawing to get it down to the size you see it. So here's what they give us. The scale of a map is one inch is to 24 miles. About how far is it between the two cities that are three inches apart on the map? So what they're telling us here is every inch that's shown on the map is actually 24 miles. And if you didn't notice here, this is actually a rate. Right? They're telling us, or, yeah, it's a rate. They're telling us one inch is to 24 miles. So really, it's a ratio. I had that wrong. One inch is to 24 miles. All right? Now, that's one part of our proportion right here, one to 24. Now, again, we have to do next one. And we have to look at what they tell us about how far is it between two cities that are three inches apart. Well, I have inches on top, so this one should stay on top. So I need to find out how many miles that is. So again, do cross products. 1 times x is 1x, or just x. 24 times 3 is 72. So x is 72 miles. So if you see a map and it says, well, 1 inches to 24 miles, this one is 72 miles apart. It's your turn again. The scale of the map is 1 inch is to 44 miles. Again, that's your ratio. The distance from Sacramento to San Jose is about 121 miles. What is the approximate map distance between the two cities? So go ahead and set up your proportion, and when you're done, come back and check your answer. Pause me now. All right, let's get started. Well, I know it's 1 inch is to 44 miles. So, and then the next piece of information they give me is 121 miles. Well, that's on bottom, so it's on bottom for here, too. And there we go. There's my proportion. Now I solve. 1 times 121 is 121. 44 times x is 44x. I simplify by dividing by 44. 
and I get, if I check it out, 121 divided by 44 is 2 and 75 hundredths of an inch. Because again, we're trying to find the approximate map distance. So that is what it would show on a map. It would be about 2 and 75 hundredths of an inch away from those two cities. All right, so that was your lesson tonight. Tonight we talked about using similar figures and indirect measurement in order to solve different proportions. Uh, have a good night. See you in class tomorrow. Tomorrow.